guys have been asking me to inspect my gearbox after running it on 3S. My Raider has only had a handful of runs on 3S. However, it's had, oh, probably 20 or so runs on 2S at over 40 miles an hour. And open up the gearbox. The best I can see, everything looks really good. I don't see any abnormal wear or anything. I am getting ready to install a custom differential in the car. This should hopefully fit. It's a Tamiya ball diff with a custom spur gear on it to allow it to fit the Raider. So I'm gonna get this to hopefully go in the car here in the near future and then test it out and see how it performs. But it should be much stronger than the stock differential. I'll post more information on the differential later, but it's a Tamiya unit, a DTO2, and I mail ordered the custom spur gear from England and assuming this works, I'll put the contact information in these videos so that you folks can um, get the spur gear for yourselves if you want to upgrade the differential and the Raider. The stock differential is supposed to be the weakest part of the gearbox, and this aftermarket one is a ball diff, and it looks substantially stronger. And you can get you know, replacement parts fabricated and uh, obviously the Tamiya part of it is is already made. You just don't use the spur gear that comes with the Tamiya diff and you use the aftermarket one that I got from England. I was told I was going to have to use the Dremel tool and grind the edges of the pressure plate down a little bit on this ball diff so it doesn't hit the plastic housing in here. There's only been one other guy that's done this before and he's not on uh, YouTube or Facebook or at least he doesn't make YouTube videos. But I was very grateful that he gave me information I needed to hopefully make this happen. So after disconnecting the, uh, what are these called, control arms I suppose, then you just have to pull the joints with the bearings out. If you, don't, if you don't have bearings, I, I strongly suggest you get them, especially if you're running a brushless setup like I am here. This Raider's gone 56 miles an hour, and I'll post a link in the video description where uh, I got it on video. And uh, that was actually on a really cheap 3S battery, so it might actually be able to hit 60 on a better battery. Once the two joints are removed, I should be able to fish the differential out. But first, I'll have to remove this um, pin here, the C pin, and uh, pull the metal shaft out that this gear sits on, which should allow me to pull the differential out. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this pin out. Once the pin's removed, you can slide this Actually, you can't slide it out yet. There's a metal um, pin in here that you have to slide out first. So you can tell I have not done this in a while. Pull the pin out. Now, hopefully this will come out, yes. So you can see I have bearings on here as well. And I'll go ahead and clean all of this up. 
before I reassemble the car, or the gearbox rather. When I look really close at this gear, I do see some wear on it. Um, probably really hard to see in the video, but there is some wear. I don't know if that's necessarily from it being a brushless setup that may have always been like that, or at least, you know, since I was a kid and used to run this car all the time. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the gearbox cover, this access panel. And then I can remove this piece of electrical tape that I have blocking off the hole here that's partially exposed when the cover's on there. And then I can push this metal pin out to remove the idle gear. Now, those of you that watched my previous videos will know that this is a 32 tooth idle gear. And that in combination with the 18 tooth pinion gear makes the car a lot faster. And looking at this gear, I don't see any unusual wear. All right, now I can go ahead and remove the stock differential. And if we look at it, the teeth on the gear look perfectly fine. Now the internals, who knows, I've never opened it. So far, so good. Even though my car goes 56 miles an hour, I do have the brushed motor on the ESC, the punch turned all the way down to soft trying to limit the, um, you know, the force that is applied to the gears. And I, you know, don't do burnouts and donuts anymore with the more powerful setup. I know people have broken these differentials with way less power than I'm putting down, but mine actually looks okay. Here's one my YouTube friend, Wade Skelton, gave me as a spare. And I think it's brand new. But they look, the best I can tell, in similar condition. I'll leave a link to Wade's YouTube channel in the video description. It's a great channel and you guys should check it out. The guy that did this before said he had to grind down the pressure plates to make them uh, make a little more room so this would fit and the gearbox. Now I just seated it in there a minute ago and it seemed okay, it was snug, but I don't know if I actually need to grind it down. Now there is this gap where the bearing sits on the joint and I'm not sure if that's how it is in a Tamiya car, but I, I'm going to try it and see what happens. He did not say there was different bearings needed for this install. Okay, I have both the joints with the bearings in there. See if the dog bones will fit.
That's with no modifications at all. And it doesn't appear there's too much friction from it gently rubbing the inside of the plastic housing. Maybe when it runs and spins fast, it'll create some heat and actually melt the housing slightly, but that would probably just make it back off a little bit. I think I might just try it like this and hope for the best. Okay, now I'm gonna put this gear back in. It's the one that touches the differential. I don't have the manual here in front of me, but uh, it's labeled 4120. I'm gonna have to put the dog bones in and tighten the screws down. But as you can see, it looks like it, it fits in there as it should. You know what, I should probably put a little bit of grease on here. Might allow it to stick in there a little better. So once that's in there, I should be able to slide it in the gear. Perfect. I was getting a low battery warning on my phone, so. But there we go, the metal pin, I slid it in there. And then I have to slide this bearing back on here. I must say, this gearbox does not inspire much confidence. It feels very much like a toy, especially after looking at my son's Bandit or even my Ultima. So now I'm gonna throw that C-pin back in there and uh, it should be in good shape. Next comes reinstalling this C or E-clip, whatever it is. This can be very tedious and uh, we'll see how it goes. Next in goes the idle gear. Again, this is the 32 tooth idle gear. meshes. Now the stock dog bones for the Raider and the Ultima are 68 millimeters. I believe it's from pin to pin. I was running 70 millimeter dog bones in the car. They were much cheaper. I got them off of Amazon and a set off Ally Express. However, when I was trying to uh, line up the screw here for the control arm, it was not fitting quite right. Now I could have extended this because I have adjustable control arms, 
but uh, I figure I was just going to use the stock size for now uh, because most of you guys will also be using the stock size. So I'm going to go ahead and lube up the gears and uh, put this back together and hopefully get this thing out on a run pretty soon. All right, that's it. It's buttoned back up. Everything spins pretty freely. Again, I am getting some friction on the sides of the diff here. And uh, I'll take it easy and see how it goes. But if it seems like too much, I will have to take that back apart and use the Dremel tool to shave a little bit of the lip off of the differential but um there we go i have high hopes for this this could solve a problem for a lot of folks and here she is all lubed up and ready for a good thrashing much quieter and she seems a lot happier with me wish me luck I think the first video will be 2S. Maybe I'll do a speed run to see if that friction is noticeable. Alright, well, hopefully this video does the trick. And this fix is the answer.